Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. In a moment, we'll begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine, but first, which one of these gasoline qualities do you think your car could do without? Full power, quick starting, fast warm up, area blending, vapor lock prevention? Anti-knock, smooth acceleration, or economy mileage. Right. Your car needs all of these qualities. That's why it's important to you to know that you get not one, not two, but all eight of these high-performance qualities in correct balance when you buy Chevron Supreme gasoline. Drive in soon and fill up with Chevron Supreme gasoline at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean... We take better care of your car. And now, tonight's story, Come to the Casbah, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. Nothing like Paris, is there, George? Ah, you kind of like it, eh, George? I love it. You know, I've dreamed of sitting at a little cafe like this. Just like they do in the movies. Yeah. Well, it's too bad we have to go home tomorrow. Back to the old routine. Oh, it's so peaceful here that I never... Uh, hey! I... Oh, look out now, Clumsy. Pardon, monsieur. Me, pardon. Look, you'd look where you were going, oh, Buster. No, don't make a scene, George. The man said he was sorry. Sorry? I hope so, spilling out drinks Wait like that. Wait a minute. That. He dropped something on the table. I don't care if he... It's I... a card with something written on it. It's a stupid way to advertise. Monsieur Valentine, I am taking this way of approaching you because I do not want to do so openly. If you are interested in an assignment, remunerative but dangerous, please follow me. I will be waiting across the street. Now, what kind of nonsense? You're waiting there, George. Yeah, so I see. It might mean a job. It might mean we could stay longer in Paris. Are you going to follow him, George? Oh, I'll follow him, all right. If it's only to punch him in the nose. Come on. Which office? Mr. Valentine. Mr. Valentine, this way. Hey, wait a minute, Angel. Better let me look into this. If you think I'm going to let you go in there alone, you've got to... Look, please? Uh, Mr. Valentine, uh, Miss Brooks, I'm sorry that I had to reach you this way. Uh, please, quickly. Kind of a strange way to try to engage a man's services, if that's your idea. Again, my apologies. Uh, uh, sit down, won't you? Okay. I have uh, made inquiries about you, Monsieur Valentine, and you, Miss Brooks, and uh, I think you are just the people I am looking for. Well, that all depends. I don't know who you are. And... Again, me, pardon. I am Pierre Carreau, agent de sorte français. Here are my credentials. Oh. Yeah. Well, I suppose it's okay. You uh, do not speak French. Oh, sure, a little. Miss Brooks here is a better scholar than I am. Look. No. Looks all right to me. I picked up a little French, of course, I in the... Know, uh... in the invasion of Africa and the drive through France during the last war. Ah, oh, you know I was there. <laughs> My government has made a thorough check of your record. I think this is a complete dossier. Uh -huh. well, looks quite full. <laughs> Starts off with a lot of things I've forgotten. Oh, let me see, George. Uh, never mind, Okay, mister, I'll admit you've covered my career quite thoroughly. You will forgive the necessity, I am sure. Uh, this matter is something in which my department uh, cannot appear officially, but it is nevertheless very important. 
Perhaps it's something I wouldn't care about. Perhaps it's something I couldn't do. Oh, no, 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 monsieur. All you have to do is to meet a man and get a small package of papers from him and return them to me. That sounds simple, but I suppose there's a catch in it somewhere. <laughs> Pardon, I do not understand the, the catch, as you say, but it may not be as easy as you think. One reason we have chosen you is your familiarity with Algiers. Your record shows that you were there. Algiers? Uh, did you say Algiers? Uh, uh, oui, Miss Brooks. You mean the Casbah? And... Yes, yes, that, that is right. Uh, you know the Casbah, of course, Monsieur Valentin. Well, as a matter of fact, it was off bounds for us when I was stationed oh, there. Oh, I am so sorry. Perhaps oh, that doesn't mean I didn't get there. Anyone in Algiers who didn't see the Casbah. Ah, that is better. Well, am I supposed to go there to pick up this package? Yes, monsieur. You will go to a place, which I will tell you of later. You will pick up this package and return it to me. Ah, uh-huh. and that's all? Not quite all. Now, the man you will meet there will have to be sure that you are the one he expects. Well, I suppose I'll have the proper identification. That is where the difficulty lies. You will not identify yourself as Georges Valentin, but as Frank Benham... An English scientist. Oh, now, wait a minute, please. I'm afraid that's not too easy. I don't know a molecule for a nucleus. Uh, maybe we'd better call the whole thing off. Or at least uh, tell me what's back of all this. Why Why can't this fellow Benham go himself? Benham cannot go, Monsieur Valentin, because it is impossible. Hey, do you get this, Brooksy? Looks to me if Mr. Carroll were trying to get hold of something under false pretenses. Precisely, Miss Brooks. But after all, my country is friendly with England, well, and I can't I just... will explain a little more in detail. A man named Fedak took certain plans from the briefcase we were supposed to deliver to the American embassy. Uh, so far, we have not reported the theft. But we have located Fedak in Algiers. Oh, I see. You want to get those plans back? Exactly, uh, Benham planned to meet Fedak in Algiers, receive the plans, and then take them somewhere behind the Iron Curtain. Benham? An Englishman? Uh, I regret, Miss Brooks, that there are a number of English scientists, just as there are French and American scientists, who believe, uh, sincerely perhaps, that the best way to keep the world from war is to secure every plan of secret weapons for the Eastern country. Yeah, so I've heard. As I said... My country uh, cannot act officially, nor can I. But if you can secure these plans so that I may return them to the American embassy, it will save us needless explanation and uh, much embarrassment. Uh, You understand? Yeah, sure, I think so. Then uh, you will take the assignment. Come with me to the Caspar, George. No, 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 Angel. You stay right here. George! (laughs) Oh, contrary, Monsieur Valentin. Uh, Professor Benham was traveling with his assistant, a, a Miss Moncrief. Well, now, where did you find Alyssa? Oh, monsieur, we have our methods. But suppose Professor Benham and Miss Moncrief got there first. That would be impossible, Miss Brooks. The professor is dead and Miss Moncrief is in jail. Oh, I get it. Well, you're very thorough. We of the charité have to be. And suppose this Fadak doesn't admit I'm the professor. Oh, he will. I have Benham's identity card, and, of course, uh, Fadak will ask you certain questions. <laughs> and I hope you'll give me the answers. That's right, man. Now... About your plans, you will take the plane from Le Bourget. To think I'm going to see the Cosmos at last. Yeah. Well, you're going to be very disappointed, Angel. I'll tell you that right now. Most of the streets are all up and down stairs. They're narrow and dirty and smelly. But romantic. If a man doesn't keep his hands in his own pockets, he's liable to find someone else's hand there. <laughs> now, let me see if I have this code business right. I go to the shop in the Cosma. Two short knocks, one long. I ask, have you any souvenirs? He replies, what kind of souvenirs? I say, paintings of the Casbah. Then if he asks me in, I say, the color scheme of my room is red. And if he replies, Allah bless you, I hand him my identification card and get the package. It sounds simple. Yeah, almost too simple. George. Hmm? George Valentine. Well, you seem to be known everywhere. Yeah, I'm famous, but I don't figure what this is. Imagine seeing you here, George. I, uh, I beg your pardon? Oh, come on now, George. Don't say you've forgotten me. After all the time we spent together, Bill Turner. 
Well, uh, yeah, yeah, Bill Turner. <laughs> you coming back to live over your old experiences? Well, no, no, not exactly. Honeymoon, I suppose. Uh, this is Claire Brooks, my assistant. Uh, Bill Turner. How do you How do? How do you do, Miss Brooks? You know, uh, George and I were together in the late unpleasantness. Yeah. So I guess. <laughs> I thought you were on your honeymoon. Not yet. Oh, you you mean you're on an assignment? Hey, I've seen those ads of yours. Um, if a job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it was in the Army, Miss Brooks. Always shaming the rest of us by volunteer. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I can't remember. Uh, what brings you to this part of the world, Bill? Oh, I, I'm just a tourist. Well, just like us. Say, uh, how'd you happen to come to Algiers? Well, uh, we were in Paris on business and had a few days off, and uh, Brooksy wanted to see the Casbah. Mm, that's the way with me. Where are you stopping? That big hotel on the hill, Yaletti. Oh, good, good. I'll see you around. Maybe we can uh, see the Casbah together. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, give me a ring. Yeah, I will. I'm very glad to have met you, Miss Brooks. Thank you. Well, no, that's too bad. Why? He seems like a nice fellow. Yeah, he probably is. But he's going to be hard to avoid when I call on Fadak. Oh, phew. You're right, George. The Cosby is smelly. It's even worse than I remember it. Come on, I want to get this thing over with and get out of here. You don't mean I'm not going to have a chance to shop now that we're here. Anything you see here, Angel, you can buy cheaper at home. Besides, we're here on a job, remember? Yeah, I know, George, but a few minutes can't matter, and there's so many things I want to see, and we may never be here again. Oh, give him something, George. Well, if I do, we'll have him following us around like flies. Oh. Speaking about flies, you'd think all that meat hanging out in the sun would be unhealthy. I got news for you, Brooksy. It is unhealthy. Well, the people here look well enough. Well, it's all right for them. We could live here. Now, if you're satisfied, I'll take you down the hill and get your taxi back to the hotel, and then I'll look up Fader. You can't get rid of me like oh, that. Oh, listen, Angel, you can't go in there with me. Why not? Professor Benham has an assistant, Miss Monk. I know that, but... Get it on, it... Professor Elsie. Brooksy, please, don't try to be comic. Uh, I'm afraid you'll have to postpone your visit to the souvenir shop. Look who's coming. Huh? Oh, good Lord, Bill Turner. Hi there, folks. I suppose we'll never get rid of him. Oh, hi, Bill. Hey, how'd you get away so early? I uh, stopped by your hotel, found out you were gone. <laughs> we don't believe in missing a moment. Uh, it's quite a sight, isn't it? Yeah, quite a smell, too. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Turner, do you know what all those blue hands are stamped on the meat? Well, no, I can't say that I do. Well, you'll see those blue hands on the houses as well as the meat, all over, as a matter of fact. They call it the hand of Fatima. It's supposed to bring luck. Oh! There's some little ones in the window. They're earrings. Hey, uh, Bill, uh, I wonder if you do me a favor. Sure, George, if I can. Well, I saw something in a shop back there that Brooksy wanted. She didn't think she could afford it, and I'd like to get it for her as a surprise. Oh. If you'll keep an eye on her for a minute, I'll go back and get it. Well, sure, George. I won't be a minute. But, George, if you'll wait. Must be right down this alley. Souvenirs? What kind of souvenirs? Oh, uh, paintings of the Casbah? Come in, monsieur. All right, thank you. The color scheme of my room is red. Allah bless you. I will see. They don't have to be very large. <laughs> Professor Benham? Yes, that's right. Your fate, actually? Yes, comrade. Here's my card. Ah, thank you. You had a hard time getting here? No, no, quite simple. Miss Moncrief and I had a very pleasant trip. She's waiting for me at the hotel. I will get you what you want. Uh, where are you followed? Who would follow me? I took an assumed name. <laughs> I assure you, the arm of the French surete is long. Well, here you are. All right, thanks. You know where you are to take it. Naturally. But uh, the address, please. Well, frankly, comrade, I wasn't supposed to tell you. Oh, no, I'll take I must this have... package. Huh? Just throw it here and keep your hands up. Bill. Throw it down, I say. Oh, no, American, you won't get it. Wait a minute. 
Hey, Bill, Bill, stop him. He's getting away. Just stay where you are, George. I wouldn't want to shoot you. But I will if you move. In just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Maybe you're one of the ever-increasing number of motorists who drive cars equipped with an automatic transmission. If so, you know that it makes driving easier, smoother, practically effortless, because you don't have to shift. But it is one of the most delicately engineered units in modern cars, and it needs to be checked every 1,000 miles. This frequent inspection is necessary for your protection. Loss of fluid, vapor condensation and metal particles in the automatic transmission can greatly impair its performance and possibly ruin the unit. So it's important that the automatic transmission be drained and refilled at regular intervals. That's where our car savers come in. The men at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations are specially trained to give expert service to automatic transmission units. What's more, they have the fluids that meet factory specifications for your make and model unit. This is a car saver service you can purchase with your Chevron National Credit Card. So take advantage of the convenience of your nearby car savers. Efficient, dependable, automatic transmission service is only one of the many things you'll find at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Official of the French Sûreté Police sends you to Algiers on a diplomatic mission to pick up a package that has been stolen from a diplomatic briefcase. You are to pose as an Englishman, Professor Benham, and get in touch with a man named Fadak. You meet Fadak in a hole in the wall in the famous Kasbah, and you almost get your hands on the package when Bill Turner, whom you met in the army, appears and demands the package. Fadak escapes. If your name is George Valentine, you wonder which side Bill is on when he says... So you're pretending to be Professor Benham. No comment. I might have guessed. You and Miss Brooks answered the description, but I never thought Listen, that you... Listen, Bill, what's your interest in this thing? If I had any authority over here, I'd have you in jail so fast... I never thought you'd turn against your country, not after your record. Oh, what in blue blazes are you talking about turning against my country? You were trying to get those papers that were stolen from the French embassy, weren't well, you? Well, so are you. You came here posing as Professor oh, Benham. I heard and you were outside you... the door. I knew someone was going to show up, but I didn't think it would be you. I don't know what to say. You of all people. Will you please stop acting like a fool? If I'd known you needed money, I'd have been glad to lend you some. It was money, wasn't it? Well, yes, I took the job for money. Sure, of course, but what's your excuse? Here. Take a look at this. Huh? Oh, yeah. OSS. Well, that explains things. I hate to do this, George, but I've got to turn you over to the authorities. Well, before you do, let me ask you something. Do you happen to know a man named Carroll? Says he's in the French Surete? Yeah, that's right. He's the man who sent me. What? Well, he wanted to get those plans back before our embassy knew they were missing. He was afraid his government would get in trouble, so he wanted it done secretly. I was to pretend I was Benham George, and I... I never thought you'd fall for that phony. Carroll is working for the other side. I represent our embassy. Our embassy knows the plans are missing? Naturally. My job is to get them back. And now, thanks to your eagerness, the stuff is gone. We'll get it back. We'll work together. I should have known you were okay. Well, how do you suggest we go about it? The authorities know about this fellow, Fadak. He'll be picked up if he shows his nose in Algiers. He can hide indefinitely in the Casbah. But meanwhile, he may be handing the plants to someone else to take on to Egypt. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. And I'll have to search the Casbah from top to bottom. But that's needle in the haystack stuff. Got any better idea? Um, hey, look, Fadak thinks I'm Benham. If I could let him think I'd gotten rid of you, I might try to contact him again. How? Oh, drop a hint here and there, leave word at the shop. Well, maybe. You and I can stage a fake fight. I'll get away and get hold of Brooksy. Hey, Brooksy. What did you do with Brooksy? I left her out there looking at those little blue hands. Uh, what did you call them? The hands of Fatima. Yeah. I, uh, I wanted to see where you were going in such a hurry. You mean she's out there in the Casbah alone? She'll be safe. Maybe she will and maybe she won't. I'm going to look for her. Say, have you seen anything of an American lady? Look, 
Look, I was standing right here with a lady. Did you see where she went? Oh, now, look, please. There was a lady here with me a few minutes ago. Did you see where... No sign of her, Bill. Maybe she went back to the hotel. No, I called her. She hadn't come in. Meanwhile, those plans... I don't think fate I could give them to anyone who hasn't the identification card. Maybe we'll learn something if we stage that fake fight right now. Hey, what are you doing? I haven't Wait, time. You? Play rough. Sorry, I have places to go. See you later. Come on, come on. Hey, hurry up, operator, will you? This is important. I want to speak to the American Embassy in Paris. No, no, I said the American Embassy in Paris. Just a minute. Uh, Well, what is it? I beg your pardon, but I was looking for a friend of mine... Professor Benham. He was coming to this shop. Have you seen him? Don't understand. Professor Benham is the name. I'm his assistant, Miss Moncrief. I'm looking for souvenirs. What kind of souvenirs? Well, paintings of the Kazva. Come in. Thank you. I want them for my room at home. The color scheme is red. Allah bless you. Well? You have your identification. The professor has the card. I'm sorry, young lady. I can't do any business with you unless you show me your card. But I'm Miss Moncrief, the professor's assistant. The professor was arrested. And now you better get out of here. Arrested? By whom? I don't know. Well, if he's been arrested, I'll have to carry on for him. Give me the package. How can I know you are Miss Moncrief? Oh, wait. That may be the professor. Hey, Doc. That man who came to see you. He and the other man had a fight. The man who came to see you ran away. Thank you, Hassan. Bless our Lord. Uh, I will keep watch. Well, that means the professor escaped. We will wait for him. Okay, yeah, I got it. Thank you. No, that's all I wanted. I know what to do now. No, no, please, don't worry. I'll handle it my way. Just sit tight. I'll call you later. George, where have you been? Looking for Brooksy. Have you seen her? No, I haven't. I thought from this high point in the Casbah here, I might be able to pick her out. Say, look, I've been thinking. Might be a good idea if I went and saw this fellow, Fadak. Give me your identification card. I'll try my luck. Give you what? Your identification card. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Nothing doing. Now, look, I don't want to have to take it from you. You and who else? I don't want to get rough, George. Hey, now, wait a minute, Bill. I owe you one for that sock you gave. Look out, Bill. This railing isn't very strong. If it breaks, you'll fall on someone's rope. Will you give me that? I know I won't. Look out, Bill. What did I tell you? That skylight. I won't wait any longer, Mr. Fadak. I don't think the professor's coming back. You are not going anywhere, lady. You can't keep me here if I want to go. We are waiting until the professor comes. Sit down. There he is. No, it is not his knock. I will see. Shut the door. I may be followed. Bill. Well, Miss Brooks. You're hurt. Thanks to that boyfriend of yours, he wouldn't listen Where to... Where is he? He's taken care of. You mean you and George had a fight? Yeah. It's lucky for me I was on top when we crashed through that skylight. You mean George is hurt? I hope so. Oh, where is he? I must go to him. You stay where you are. I'll take that package, Fadak. Identification. I haven't time to go through all that rigmarole. Here's the identification card. Here's mine. Just give the stuff to me so I can get out of here before Valentine comes to Valentine? I don't understand. Valentine is the man who was posing as Professor Benham. He's representing the French government. This girl is Miss Brooks. Not Miss Moncrief? No, not Miss Moncrief. The police must have grabbed Miss Moncrief, so give me that package. Bill, I don't understand. Just tell George when he comes to that that I'm really sorry I had to do this to him. I liked him a lot when we met in Germany, in spite of politics. Tell him that... Why don't you tell him yourself? George! Darling, you yeah, won't... head is bloody but unbowed. Okay, Buster, the gendarmes can take over you. You too, Fadak, George. And Bill, I... I'd hate to have you think I fell for that fake OSS card. Many... 
many automobile manufacturers now recommend a heavy-duty motor oil for top protection under all driving conditions. To keep modern engines running better, our scientists subjected hundreds of motor oils to grueling laboratory and road tests. Even atomic energy was used in this search. Treated piston rings in test cars helped unlock new secrets of motor wear as it occurred. The result was heavy-duty RPM, which actually exceeds all manufacturers' requirements for a heavy-duty motor oil. Compared to premium-type motor oils, as designated by the American Petroleum Institute, RPM actually doubles engine life, time between major overhauls due to lubrication. So buy what's best for your car. Get heavy-duty RPM motor oil at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. You're sure you feel all right, George? Oh, sure, I'm fine. Now that I have those plans back. I'll be mighty happy when you're able to turn them over to Monsieur Carreau. Yeah, so will I. Imagine Bill Turner trying to tell me Carreau was a phony. You know, I can't understand Bill Turner, a good-looking young American. Well, it's like Carreau said. There are even some Americans who prefer to play ball with the other side. I remember now, Bill was very friendly when we met Uncle Joe's boys in Germany. Fraternizing, they call it. When did you start to suspect him? Well, when he didn't know about the hand of Fatima. I remembered him from Germany, but not from Algiers. First, I thought perhaps he'd been in Algiers with another outfit. But when he didn't know anything about the hand of Fatima, I was sure he'd never been to the Casbah. That's one of the first things everyone asks about. It's funny how little things are the ones... Well, that was only the beginning. I didn't know where these papers were supposed to be taken, but Bill did know. Egypt. And when he tried to tell me Carol was a phony, I checked with the American embassy by phone. I'm glad when you fell through that skylight that you landed on something soft. Yeah, it was someone's bed. And it's too bad the lady wasn't still there for me to thank her. But when I go back to the Casbah, I'll we look her up. We won't be uh... going back. Huh? No more, uh, come with me to the Casbah? Well, perhaps I'd consider it on a honeymoon. That was one good idea Bill had. Uh, my headaches. I think I'll take a nap. Oh, George. <laughs> Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Daly is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by Davis Kent and directed by Kenneth Webb. Ted DeCorsia was heard as Corot, Harry Bartell as Bill Turner, and Larry Dobkin as Fada. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.